Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. Join me as we press in this day to lay hold of the authority of His presence. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. As we come and present ourselves day after day in the secret place of His presence, that should have such an impact on us. Many believers are held captive by the world around, captive by their circumstances, captive by their feelings, captive by words spoken. Yet, if we lay hold of the authority of His presence, it will so lift you. Because in His presence there truly is liberty. In His presence there truly is peace. In His presence there is a joy. Because in His presence there is an authority. I was watching a show, and in it they were trying to scientifically explain and understand how the Ark of the Covenant carried such authority that when the children of Israel would take it into battle, it would cause the walls of Jericho to fall, it would cause the enemies to be defeated. But what they could not understand, because they were looking at things naturally, they could not understand the revelation that it was between the two cherubim on the lid or the mercy seat that the presence of the Almighty God dwelt, walking with His people. And that presence walking with Him and the authority of the presence would take a people who were the least of the least and make them the greatest. You may look at yourself and say that you are the least of the least. You may look at yourself and your lack of abilities, your lack of strength, your lack of resources, but when you come into the secret place of His presence and you understand His authority and who He is, it lifts you. And it makes you a son and a daughter, an heir and a co-heir. It brings you to such a place of an authority and power and prayer. It brings you to a place where you can truly walk in liberty, set free. It brings you to a place that you have something to give. Oh, let's pray and let's press in because this message truly will bless and change your life. So Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come because of you. We come, Father, seeking your face. We come to have such an encounter this day with you. Father, would you open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and give us a hearing arm. Holy Spirit, come into this place. Come and meet with us. Let your presence be so real, so tangible. Open the word and let all eyes be on Jesus. Let us build our lives upon the hearing and the doing of the word knowing that your presence is ever with us, ever in us. And I thank you, Father, that we would truly get a revelation of what that means in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Go to Luke chapter 4. And in Luke 4, we see Jesus starting his earthly ministry. Now, we know that he came on this earth, perfect God, but perfect man, walking as an earthen vessel so emptied of himself, so yielded, and yet so filled with the presence of God. For 30 years he does no miracle, does nothing. But then he goes down to the Jordan, gets baptized in water, gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, and everything changes. He goes into the wilderness in power, he comes out filled and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Comes to his hometown, and in Luke 4 verses 18 and 19 says this, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that anointing of His presence on me and in me, there's an authority. The word, that authority the world could not understand. The elders and scribes couldn't grasp. They questioned, where do you get this authority from? Because they didn't have it. They thought that they knew all things. They thought that they were the authority. But they had no ability to speak to a storm and say, be still. They had no ability to speak to someone blind and say, see. They had no ability to walk up to somebody possessed of a devil and say, be set free. They had no liberty. They had no power like Jesus did. There was something about Jesus demonstrated and separated by the authority of the presence. 
It said that he spoke as one who had an authority. The people marveled at it. They heard the preaching of the scribes and Pharisees, but when Jesus spoke, there was an authority. Smith Wiggles would say, you're not going to get it without having his presence. His presence changes you. You're not going to be able to get the results without the marks of the Lord. The man must have the divine power within himself. Devils will take no notice of any power if they do not see Christ. Many believers try to get into all kinds of new age garbage. It doesn't belong to the Lord. But what we have is something greater. If we get a hold of and we surrender in the secret place of his presence and realize that who he is and that he is more than enough. He is the almighty God. He carries all authority. He doesn't do things by some natural way. He does things supernaturally because of who he is. He's able to speak into every circumstance into your life and change it so that it comes into compliance with his perfect will, which is always perfect and good. He's able to speak over every sickness and disease. And if you will dare believe him and surrender to the authority of his word, bring you healing and make you whole. It changes you. When we get a hold of the presence and the authority that was with it, it changes us. Because when you walk with one who has authority, it rubs in you. You see the way he is. You see how he walks. You see how he preaches. You see his life. And it gets in you. Oh, have you ever walked with somebody that has such an energy level that it stretches you? Or somebody that walks in such a discipline that it stretches you, it provokes you. I am telling you that in the secret place of his presence, as you stand before the one who has absolute authority, it changes you. Because you have authority, because you come under authority. And it's under the authority that we walk that determines the victory that we have. It's only under his authority when we recognize who he is, it's the revelation of who he is in our life that brings us to the place of victory. Smith Wigglesworth here was talking about the sons of Sceva and how they saw Paul do something. They were priestly sons and assumed they had such an authority. And they see this model and they decide, let's just follow, duplicate what Paul did, the model. And surely the model will work. And there's many believers that find a model in the word and they seek to duplicate the model and it doesn't produce the results because it's not the model it's the authority it's the authority of the presence and unless the authority of the presence is there operating in our lives that we have submitted to it that we've had such an encounter that we've stood face to face eye to eye and been broken by it it's only then that we can so speak and operate with that authority. Smith added, quoting from the, the verse that I started with, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That alone is the power. Don't be deceived. There's no place to get where you know the Spirit is upon you. Sorry, don't be deceived. There's a place to get where you know the Spirit of God is upon you so that you will be able to do the works which are wrought by this blessed Spirit of God in you. And the manifestation of his power shall be seen, and the people will believe in the Lord. See, when it's truly the Holy Spirit operating, when it's truly his authority, because I've come and I have so submitted, it's a process, it's a making, it's a day after day coming, it's a day after day of humbling of the old, bringing this flesh and this whole being into submission to the Lord God. Paul said, I daily crucify myself, daily bring myself into this place that God, you are the authority. It's your way. He made of himself a bond servant, freely submitting and surrendering all of his rights and said, God, I'm yours. And it was that yielded vessel that God so used with such power that Paul said, I preach the gospel, not in the wisdom of men, but in the power and the demonstration of the spirit. It was in that authority, and it was seen. He carried such authority that he could take handkerchiefs and pray over them. Not setting a model, but so explaining how, as I come into the secret place and I submit to his authority, 
there is an afterglow that gets on us, that drips from us, that they could take handkerchiefs and they carry that authority of the presence that where it went, it changed things. See, when I walk in the authority of the presence, it has to change the world around me. It has to lift me out of that I'm not held captive to my circumstances, captive to words, but I'm held captive to the perfect will of God. It took Jesus so that he was able to go forth and do the assignment of heaven. You can't do what God's called you to do until you first in the secret place submit and you get the orders from heaven because you stand in the authority of the one who's able to assign those. And when he assigns a purpose, a commission, with that assigning, he gives authority. For he says all the authority in heaven and earth and under there was given to Jesus. And we are to go in his name, the preaching of the gospel, and everything that we do as believers on this earth are to be going forth in his authority. But it means we must first come and in the secret place, so surrender, so meet with him face to face, present ourselves day after day to him and his authority so that his presence is all over us. Jesus would every day, we'd see him get up early. We'd see him pray all night because walking under the authority of the presence was everything. He said he did nothing except that which he saw the Father do. Think about that as such holy submission. Think about that. We've not even come close to that. We must press in and press on to come to that place so that day after day, God, I just want to know you. I want to know your authority in my life. I want to meet with you face to face. And in that place, allow you to so look into the depth of my being, to look into these eyes, because the eyes are the window to the soul, we're told. And he wants to look so deep. He wants his glaze to so penetrate, to so impact that you know that this day you've met an authority and you are never, ever going to be the same. Smith went on to say, What will make man believe the promises of God? Beloved, let me say to you today, God wants you to be ministering spirits, and it means to be clothed with another power. And this divine power, you will know when it is there and you'll know when it goes forth. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. We see that wonderful account. We see this crowd pressing in around Jesus who saw him as a superstar, but they saw him just as an earthen vessel. They were touching him, but got nothing from him. Oh, they were excited. Oh, it sounded glorious, but they got nothing. But there was a woman there that came and she recognized authority. And she says, but if I touch the hem of his garment, the zitzit, the tassels, because they, she understood they spoke of his authority. If I go to the story of Saul and Samuel, where Saul has been disobedient and Samuel comes to correct him. And what does Saul do? Saul grabbed and ripped from him the hem of his garment, saying, I take from you, I am king and you submit to my authority. And I take from you your authority because Saul thought he was it. And many people operate thinking they are it and thinking they have such an authority. But see, Samuel knew that his authority came from heaven and he had to walk in obedience, walk in holy fear. He then turns, because you've done this, try to take this from me to overstep your authority. God takes from you the kingship. It's removed. David in the, in the caves, would come and cut off the hem, those tassels, and would be so grieved because he realized he was not the one who could do that. He could not touch that. So this woman with the issue of blood recognizes that that's the point where I touch and recognize his authority. She had gone to all these doctors, authorities regarding sickness and disease, and they could not make her any better. Their authority wasn't great enough. But she says, I see Jesus. She didn't see a celebrity. She didn't see an earthen vessel. She saw a healer. She recognized that in that anointing, the Spirit of God on him and in him, there was the anointing to heal her body. And she comes based on that authority and comes to the point where she connects with his authority. And when she touched it, something went forth. The power of that authority. 
to so touch her circumstance that she was instantly healed. Jesus, who's been touched by the crowd, stops and says, somebody touched me. And the disciples said, what do you mean somebody touched you? You have been surrounded with people touching you. But see, he recognized when authority was drawn. He recognized that somebody had touched his authority and there was a change. And he gets a hold of the woman, he tries and says, woman, your faith has made you, has healed you and made you whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking, so that my authority reigns in your life. My authority reigns in your circumstance because God wants to take you and bring you to the place where you are truly more than a conqueror, where you gain a far surpassing victory. Smith Wigglesworth told a story about a friend. And he said, a dear young Russian came to England. He did not know the language, but he learned it quickly and was very much used and blessed of God. And as the wonderful manifestations of the power of God were seen, they pressed upon him to know the secret of his power. But he felt it was so sacred between him and God, he should not tell it. But they pressed him so much, he finally said to them, First, God called me, and his presence was so precious that I said to God at every call, I would obey him. And I yielded, and I yielded, and I yielded, until I realized that God took me, tongue, thoughts, and everything. And I was not myself, but it was Christ working through me. How many of us today have known that God has called you over and over and has put his hand upon you, but you have not yielded? How many of you have the breathing of his power within you, calling you to prayer, and you have to confess you've failed? Because when we get that touch, when we get that call, we are to recognize the authority that he has and obey. Someone texted me in the middle of the night. Dire situation needs your prayer. My body said, you can do it. Get up in a little later and do it. So I thought, okay, I'll just go to sleep. I could, yes, I could do that in a bit. And then the Lord spoke and said, now. So I got up and began to pray. And I realized that we are supposed to be instant in obedience instant and i realized that he has called us and sent us and with the call there comes an authority but there comes a responsibility to walk with an authority demands that we walk in the responsibility of it of submitting of obeying of understanding that it means he receives all honor all glory that he is the one that we honor that we do it his way not ours and we understand it's not us, but him that's doing it. And I have to somehow get out of the way. I have to so surrender, so yield, and allow him. Oh, there's so many of us want to boast in us, as if I have something, as if I am something. But it's the presence. You don't need me. You don't need my ministry. You need the presence of the living God. I have nothing to give, nothing to bring, except the presence. And if I get a hold of that, and if you get a hold of this, then we must get into the secret place of his presence and seek his face that we might have bread to give, that we might have something of a substance. We come because we recognize his authority in our lives. We recognize that to operate in the call, I must submit and come under his authority. And I must so reveal him, do it his way, walk in such a cooperation, such a harmony, that I don't grieve or in any way interfere with his authority because when I do he takes us and he lifts us he takes you from being ordinary to extraordinary he takes you from being the least to the greatest he takes you and makes you that you're the head and not the tail that you're blessed in everything you put your hands to that you are more than a conqueror in that place as you stand in the secret place look into his eyes and his gaze so penetrates so impacts you understand that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That no matter what you face, no matter how loud, how strong, how great it is, he's greater. You understand that he is the almighty God and your vision of him suddenly becomes so much bigger that nothing, no mountain can stand in your way. 
and if a mountain would dare challenge you, there's something that stirs up in you. Because of his authority, that mountain must be moved. That mountain must go. And you now speak as one who has authority. You carry the afterglow of that presence and the authority of the presence. Your words don't just bounce off the walls. But as you lay hold of the words the Master says, and you speak, those words impact. It will change your prayer life, I think, of Ezekiel. And how the Lord brought him to the valley of the dry bones. And many of us face valleys of dry bones. And we say it is all over. There's nothing we can do. But God calls us. And he says, let me show you my authority. And now, in my authority, speak my purpose. And my purpose only. That the dry bones live. And we would not dare add or take from his words. But because we know we've surrendered wholly to his authority. We carry that and we speak that. We think of Adam and Eve called to walk with dominion with his authority, but with the limitations that you shall not eat of that one tree. And when God says you shall not do this, we do not do that. We may not understand, and the enemy may so tempt you with that, so challenge and play games, but that is something holy. We say, God, we worship you. We recognize your authority and we surrender to it. And our lives are lifted because here we become a vessel and frail earthen vessel filled with the glory of God walking as a witness to him. Smith said, the Holy Ghost wants you for the same purpose of manifesting Jesus through you. Oh, may you never be the same again. The Holy Spirit moving upon us will make us like him and we will truly say, Lord, what will thou have me to do? I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4, where we are so marked and in the secret place so surrendered to the authority of the Holy Spirit that He is able to write upon the heart the most intimate, the most tender part of our lives, that part that we so often refuse to surrender. But in that demonstration, we recognize His full authority. We come and we give. And we yield and we say write it so that it becomes so part of our spiritual DNA that everything we think walk do say glorifies him and declares his authority our lives demonstrate his authority in our lives you think about everything God created it is governed by laws held in the place of such fine-tuned those laws at the highest of the finest levels subatomic to the greatest galaxies your body operates and stays alive because of those laws and staying in that place of fine-tuned. And we stay. And we come into your secret place, God, to humble ourselves and allow your spirit to write upon our hearts so that we become living epistles, read of all, carrying the afterglow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, refusing to touch that which we're not to touch. Not going into the things that you decree unlawful, but being found faithful in the secret place, trusting you. We may not understand, but Holy Spirit, I know that you will bring us to an understanding. And I know that you will change us and so make of us that we carry something. And that, we, that which we carry is to accomplish the high purse of heaven that we go forth to go and to do. And in all things, bring the glory to Jesus. Smith said this, Yes, there is a power, a blessing and an assurance, a rest in the presence of the Holy Ghost. You can feel His presence and know that He's with you. You need not spend an hour without this inner knowledge of His presence. With His power upon you, there can be no failure. You are ready for every situation. Oh, that in the name of Jesus, you would so abide in the secret place of His presence and proactively seek so that you come and you face every day ready. That no matter what comes at you, there's already in you that authority that is greater than the problem attacking you. That your words carry the authority to release God's purpose and will in your life and confess it over your circumstances until they bow. Until every mountain is moved and cast into the sea. Are you ready? Have we come and so submitted that we would not allow one thought contrary to his perfect will? 
We would not allow one fear to so consume us and capture us. But God, you've caught us. And we come and here we so yield. Here we so cry out. Here we so seek your face in such a holy fear. Humbled that God, you would come and so abide in us and with us. Here have us. You are Lord. and We acknowledge it. Let your Lordship reign over the throne of our affection and the throne of our imagination. May every fiber of our being be wholly surrendered, yielded to you. Let our lives demonstrate the touch of your presence. Let people see you in us. Oh, may the enemy, when he looks at us, not know if it's Jesus or us, because we are so filled with living epistles, constantly bearing witness. And the word witness means martyr. One who's so laid down their life that they are dead. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ. His presence on me, in me, demonstrated in my life. Smith said, If you're living in the earth realm and expect things from heaven, they will never come. And as I saw in the presence of God the limitations of my faith, there came another faith. A faith that could not be denied, a faith that could take that took the promise, a faith that believed God's word. And from that presence, I came back again to earth, but not the same man. God gave me that faith that could shake anything else. So many of us try to attack and operate in our strength and in our might. But it is not by your power. It's not by your might. It's by the Spirit. And if we're trying to operate and do things earthly, we will fail. We have to understand by the Spirit that we've been raised up and seated with Him in heavenly places and in the secret place of His presence, so yield, so developed that our lives are found here. It's a day after day process where we are made until our identity is found in Him and we know His presence. We know His presence abides on us and in us and we know in this place how to so come so that when the trials and the difficulties present, we know to get aside into the secret place until He speaks louder, until we stand before the Almighty God, the Lord our provider, the Lord our righteousness, the Lord our healer, and we know that we have met with Him. See, most people, because they don't know this, seek to find a way, and they say, well, you pray for me. I'm not against it. Listen, we need people standing together in prayer with us. But many people, because they don't know the presence, want somebody else to go in and get it. We have to learn how to pay the price and discover the presence and be found wholly abiding there. So this, this becomes our lifestyle. Where we're blessed to be a blessing, there's something greater in us. And in His righteousness, we become more than conquerors and we reign in this life because of Him, through Him. And we know life in that abundant. Smith said, We're in a bad condition if we have to pray for power when an occasion like this comes along. Or if we have to wait until we feel a sense of His presence. The Lord promised was, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And if we will believe, the power of God will always be manifested when there is a definite need. When you exercise your faith, you will find there is a greater power in you than that which is in the world. Oh, to be awakened out of unbelief into a place of daring for God on the authority of His blessed book and the redemptive work of Christ. And that's where we stand. Because all authority is in what Jesus did. When He said it was finished, it was finished. There's authority. Authority is found in the Word, which reveals the very perfect will and thoughts of the Lord our God. And we bow to that. We humble ourselves and let that Word by the Spirit be so written on us that we would not offend it because we recognize we stand in the face of real authority. It's a proactive day after day presenting and allowing the Spirit to so work on us, to so change us, that we understand His authority in our lives. See, I have to first come under authority to walk with it. So I come every day in His presence and I submit. I yield. I allow Him to work. I allow Him to have His way. I allow Him to so open the Word I allow him, if necessary, to offend me, to rebuke, to correct, to edify me, whatever it takes, until I am such holy compliance, walking in holy obedience to his authority, under his authority, 
so that I carry something because I'm here on an assignment and I want to fulfill the high purpose of heaven, not in my strength, but in His. We're passing through. We're not of this world and we are on a commission and I want to be so faithful in that commission that the world might see and know Jesus. They might experience there's something real, a real Jesus with real answers to real problems because He has real authority. And that real authority can be experienced in an earthen vessel to which we are witnesses. Let me finish with this. But any man filled with the knowledge of Jesus, filled with the presence, filled with His power, filled with faith, is more than a match for the powers of darkness. God has called us to be more than conquerors through Him that loved us. We stand because of His presence, because of His authority, able to make known to the powers and the principalities the very manifold wisdom of God, no longer held captive, walking in fear of what the enemy may say or what the enemy may do, because greater is He that's in you, greater is He that's with you, and greater is His authority because He is the Almighty God. Unlimited in resources, unlimited in power, unlimited in ability, and He must become bigger in you so that you have a big Jesus and small devil, a big Jesus and small problem, a big Jesus and a small sickness. Because in that place of seeking His face day after day, you've come to know Him. And that day after day, abiding in His Word, where the Holy Spirit is so opening it, you've come to the place that the Word is so big. There's so much revelation in you. There's so much authority in you because of the presence that when that thing comes, there is a voice that comes out of you. There is a strength that is in you that you refuse and you make a stand on those promises and you are unmoved because you know that your God watches over His Word to perform it and you are secure. You are kept in His authority and you know that He is watching over you. Amen? Oh, I pray that you're blessed in the name of Jesus, the name of all names, that you would so encounter and experience His authority in your life today. And that in that presence, you would experience the liberty because He is all the authority. So whatever tried to hold you, whatever tried to condemn you, you are set free, by, set free from by the Spirit of the living God, even right now, even right here, in the name of Jesus. Experience it. And may the name of Jesus be upon you. And may you be blessed so that in His presence, through His authority, you are lifted. You become the head and not the tail. You are made and you discover that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you for watching. And I so pray this message has blessed you and ministered to you. If it has, in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus, you would please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms of YouTube and Google. Thank you. And would you consider becoming a prayer partner or a financial partner? I thank you for that. It helps us. For more information, simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. Well, I just want to bless you and as always to remind you, as we stand before the Almighty God, we stand and hear the acceptable day, the day of salvation, that this, I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what the situation says, I don't care what the devil says, this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it because through and for Him, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.